speaking to Andrea Varga of Wenson's Legacy, and I really wanted to touch on the topic of um, power of attorney, Andrea, because um, while I was going through my divorce, my father very sadly died, and I, I seem to remember it was only sort of probably about nine months before he died, and he was quite ill, but uh, my mum and I um, got the power of attorney um, in place, and we did it ourselves, and you know, my dad was ill and we didn't know what we were doing and there was loads of paperwork to fill in. I think we got it offline. And I don't think we really realised that actually we could have come to somebody like you to take the pressure off and get all of that sorted. And actually, in hindsight, I think maybe even if we're not in and we're younger, shouldn't we all have a power of attorney? <sighs> that's, a, that's a very good question. I was just thinking to ask you, have you actually got one in place? No. <laughs> it's, it's, one of, it's one of those things when we, when we talk to clients and we, we, we start talking about legacy planning and the obvious one tends to come up in a will, so have you got a will in place and things, but then we make it part of the conversation is to find out what actually is needed. And that's the other aspect to think about. Okay, you, we need to think about what happens once you go but also just as important is what are the other situations that we can prepare for and and not wait until it's too late because unfortunately as you said in a lot of the cases that the clients or people actually around them might not even be the kind to realize that you know they could have done something or should have done something to avoid situation and it again comes back to the lack of control you know and because when when um anybody uh, can set up a power of attorney you know if you have people you trust who you want to make the decisions for you you know it's almost like that's the way where you can that, what the word says you know you give people the power those who you trust you can give them instructions as well it's actually what you want to happen and what you want them to do when they lose capacity and you can set up now I mean, a lot of things have, have, have changed recently and they're trying to modernize the process as well, but you can set up, you know, a power of attorney. It can be separate as well. So for property and finances and also for healthcare and welfare. So it can be the two separately, two together, but there are different, you know, you can even appoint different people, but it just gives that reassurance. Once you appoint them, there's nothing you need to do after. So you can almost like gives you that peace of mind that, you know, we really want to make sure that we give our clients in, and cover everything within legacy planning of what happens, you know, in, in, in situations when somebody loses capacity. And at that time, when it does happen, then it's already too late because you can't, you cannot set up the power of attorney for them. And you mentioned, I think that, um, it took a few months to set it up. There's a lot of paperwork. So in a certain way, they're trying to make the process um, simpler so you can apply online as well. But but the actual, it's still quite complicated. And, you know, we spend a lot of time going through planning with our clients, explaining the details and discussing and advising what would be the best way. Because you can, if you just do it yourself as well, you can make mistakes mm. that you can't, you know, uh, rectify later on. So it, it is a lengthy process. And actually recently, I think a few weeks ago, they announced the Office of the Public Guardian that it takes up to 20 weeks to process one. So, you know, the sooner you we do it, the better. And there are other opportunities as well to consider, you know, powers of attorneys, as well as, um, I don't know if you heard about an advanced decision or mm -hmm. living will. Um, so again, that's something that's simpler, that's quicker, you can put in place if you want to set out what you want to happen, for example, if you go into a coma, and you can't make decisions yourself. So again, there are other things to set up. We can set up third party agreements with your banks. Um, so there's lots of options and opportunities to actually put something in place to make sure that, you know, things happen the way you want them to happen. If something happens to you it might not and then it's a good thing i think then it's it's mm -hmm. okay nothing but then just to know everything is set up then it gives you that peace of mind um, then there's nothing to worry about i think that makes a huge difference and and well worth it i think there's sort of barriers that need to be broken down around this topic as well because i think a lot of people 
think that as soon as you sign that, you're signing your life away and everybody's got access to your bank account, don't they? It's funny. Um, you mentioned yes. that to um, anyone, really. They're a bit frightened of it because they don't understand it completely. Do you find that? But I think that this is why I said that we spend a lot of time talking to clients and 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 discussing things. And, and I think there's a lot to be done um, on educating clients you know, on, on what the products are and what their options are. OK, thanks very much for clearing that up. I'm sure that um, this video will help people understand a bit more about that. And of course, they can get in touch with you. Um, we'll put all your details in the video information below. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you very much, Alison. Thank you.